If for some reason I don't get on this boat, the bummer is gonna go to a devastation. <laughs> Morning city and what city are we in? We're in Nagasaki. That's all that I had. That was my start. <laughs> she was like, I got a good way to start this. Yeah. <laughs> that was morning, it? That's all you got? City. It's from the Lego movie. Oh, okay. So this is and this is gonna be the first Japan series we filmed in quite a while because we spent last uh, last winter in Europe. And oh it's a red light, I gotta stop moving. Yeah. And we have decided to come down to a part of Kyushu that we have never explored before. It's uh, Nagasaki. And I guess we're also going to be going to Kagoshima on this trip. Yeah. So there will be a couple of video series coming that we're going to be producing during this time period. And uh, so far we haven't done a whole lot. We just stayed in kind of like a little uneventful business hotel. Yeah, you're putting that B-roll in there. Now. Yeah, oh, yeah, I am. Yeah. I want to use the B-roll I shot. Oh, it's a moving picture. <laughs> Do a pose. Though. This is my pose. This is my getting ready, my cufflinks pose. Are the cufflinks on the inside or the outside? They're on the inside? We are on our way to pick up a car because we're going to rent a car and drive around the Nagasaki, which is a prefecture as well as a city. Yeah, so, so to, we're in the city, but we're not going to be filming the city now. But we will later. We are going to film the coup. <laughs> it's going to be so cool! It's not a coup, dude! Ah, it's not a coup! It's a Ken! It's a Ken! It's going to be so Ken! <laughs> Welcome to our most recent bummer. Um, we got the car, which you'll meet. You'll meet the car in a moment. I don't want to. I do not want the car to be part of the bummer, so we're gonna wait on that. We got the car and we drove directly to our first activity, which I'm quite psyched about this activity. It just is bizarre. I just saw a picture and was like, we're gonna go and do whatever that is. And all I'm just gonna say is like, it was a bunch of cords in a picture. Didn't make any sense. That's what we're going for is cords. But the activity, we need to take a ferry to get over to an island. And I put in the wrong port and we went to the wrong port. And at the wrong port, they had the schedule for where we wanted to go and the times that we wanted to go. But those were not the times for that port. So we sat at the port waiting for the time to come. And about five minutes before, we went to a boat just to see, like, can we get on this boat? And then this older man walked by and we were like, what's going on with these boats? And he was like, well, they're not going where you, to where you want to go. Well, where's the boat? that we want. He's like, it's another like 15 minutes ride back from the way you came. What? And so we just stood there. I've made reservations for the activity that we wanted to do in the morning and that's just not going to happen. So that was a bummer. We walked back to the car and was just, what are we going to do? In my mind, it just threw everything that I've thought of for this entire trip out the window. All, all, all plans are done. Just go home. But once you cool down a little bit, we made a call to the activity, asked them if we could move our appointment from the morning, which we were never going to make that unless we could swim really fast, um, to the afternoon. They said that's totally fine. So we've got a few hours and we have solidified that we are now standing at the right port. And uh, in about an hour and a half, we'll be able to get on a boat to go and do this activity. <sighs> Soon the bummer will be over, but I won't feel good about this until I'm sitting on a boat, which is probably how I feel about a lot of things. <laughs> In more delightful news, the dude up here that I can't really see, but I can hear, sounds like he's practicing shamisen, which is not something you hear every day. <laughs> In our guidebook, there are little icons of cats like all over the place. And we have seen at least 10 cats in the first 48 hours. This one will pet itself. <laughs> Come here. I'm not coming to you. You're coming to me. I control the cats.
We just pulled up to Ikashima and it is looking rather creepy this activity that we're going to do and I know you know nothing about it but we'll get into it once we know a little bit more about it but it's brought us to a creepy little island over here that we don't know whether it's inhabited or not but we do know that it has or had a mining industry and this is either the remnants or the lasting bits that are still functional or are functioning of what was happening on this island. We don't really know too much about it. It's just an oddity. Okay, so the deal is that Ikeshima is a old island that they used to do coal mining on for like 50 years and they stopped doing it because it got too expensive to like have the manpower do it it's cheaper to do it in other countries or whatever so the coal is still here the mines are still here and we are still here yeah but people, people are still coming here and the island is mostly like in, in, in uninhabited now there's only a few hundred people that live here so like mm -hmm. it's like kind of a dead island but for some reason some people are still here and we're about to go into the earth yep <laughs> look at my get up <laughs> you look dope <laughs> I did the horn again. Uh, they put us on the, like a little train and I don't know exactly where it's gonna take us. We think it's gonna go into the earth, but right now it's kind of going through like a haunted village of industry. Lots of rust, lots of buildings that have just decayed. I feel like it's just gonna break down. <laughs> it's time. This right here what was in the book, like these cords just hanging from the ceiling in this kind of dilapidated situation. I couldn't tell what it was. So I wrote miner for a day on the paper and that's exactly kind of what it is. We're not really mining because there's no more mining to be done here, but we really are in the middle of the earth. This is not the middle. It's a little too hot there, but this is awesome and kind of dangerous to not be looking where you're going. <laughs> I think this is called the Lod Heita and it is scary looking. Like it looks like something that you'd see in a guar set. Like they would make this machine that would just tear things down. Very awesome. It's huge. Still going. Still going. Still going. <laughs> All the way down to here. They're showing us a surprising amount of machinery, and this behind me is the drum kata. And it is amazing. They turned it on. It's officially like one of my favorite contraptions of construction. It looks like Godzilla's claw. Just perpetual Godzilla's claw. <laughs> We also get to play with them. Watch your head. Come <laughs> <laughs> This is a shelter that if they had an emergency, they would come in here and there's like radios and oxygen and biscuits, <laughs> everything you need to survive. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
ねこれだけ穴を開けるんですよこれだけ穴を開けるんですよ。これだけ穴を開けるんですよ。これだけ穴を開けるんですよ。これだけ穴を開けるんですよ。これだけ穴を開けるんですよ。The trap or like snare for like an animal. And at first I was like, wait, beware of the what? Because I couldn't read this because I don't know the kanji for trap or like a snare. So I looked it up. I was like,、oh, okay, so beware of the trap. And I was like, whoa, wait a second here. Beware of the trap. What are they trying to trap on this little deserted island? And what it turns out to be is down here in this little like hole, there is a fairly large looking box with a door that would fall like a snare or a trap for something that would be like a big damn dog. It's a trap. <laughs> And I was like, whoa, what, was, what, what, would, what are they trying to catch in here? Because like, something that big could be kind of a nerve wracking sized animal. And then, of course, you walk like three feet, and Japan has made another sign for us <laughs> that I didn't see right away. And this says that they're trying to trap Inoshishi, which are wild boars. And that's a bit sketchy because in the past on trips to Kyushu, we've met people that have lived in the wilderness, and they're like, be careful of these wild pigs because they will attack you. So now we're alone on this deserted island walking around, waiting for a boat, trying not to get eaten by a pig. The tour was pretty cool. Yeah, it was definitely cool. <laughs> and it's definitely a coal mine. And it, it, I'm trying to remember everything that was said, but it sounded like it had run from the 50s until like the mid 2000, like 2005 ish time period, I think is what he said. And、um, it was just like straight up, they were digging coal out of the ground. And they didn't run out, but they quit. Mining because the cost of labor here was higher than it was in like other markets. So they just couldn't keep they just couldn't keep it going. They didn't run out. I mean, there's tons of coal still here. And they have these tunnels that go way under the ocean. And、uh, there's a lot of them. He showed us a lot of different things and explained that a whole lot of the people that worked here were actually from Indonesia and Vietnam. And when you're down there, a lot of the signs were marked in what I'm assuming is Indonesian. Yeah, I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Getting a lot of tourists from there.、Eh? <laughs> yeah, I think they were just trying to leave the, the like the leave you with the idea that that is who was doing a lot of yeah, the mining、yeah. and stuff. And、um, he had shown us like a bunch of the tools and stuff, and you would have seen all that when we when we filmed it when we were down there. And he talked a lot about the safety and stuff that went on with making sure that things don't explode inside of the coal mine. <laughs> Because of like oxygen levels and things that are monitoring things, and they're using dynamite down there、yes. to blast holes in things. And that's what the tool that we had used, like you showed,、uh, I showed Katie drilling, that they're drilling holes into the walls and then pounding dynamite into it. And then I blowing it up. I don't know if they're pounding the dynamite well, yeah, in, yeah. maybe <laughs> sliding the dynamite in. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it was, just, it was a cool little tour. And the, the dude seemed like that he was here when it was happening, the way he was talking. Ah,、oh, yeah, yeah, I couldn't tell if it, if it was or not, or if he just got to be the lucky guy that's now retired and gets to come <laughs> to the island and do the tour on the island. You know, well, you put in your hours. There's, there's, a lot of the people, they live here still. And it's, it's a dead island.、Yes. Like, there's nothing here. There's no stores, but there are some like, apartment buildings that still exist、mm. that people are living in. And people are going fishing. Yes. Fishing I'm not super clear on why people still live here. It, it doesn't seem like they have like tracts of land and their family just has it or whatever. That doesn't seem like the motivation. So it's a bit of, a, a bit of an anomaly. And we don't have anybody to ask about it at the moment. So, what about this cat? This cat knows everything. That cat? The cat lives here. There we go. Yeah, you're into it. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. I do the massage, not the pet. Bit of cat recess there. <laughs> yeah, you gotta take a break when you see the cat. So,、uh, after the tour, they just kind of let you wander around the island. And that's what we're doing. We're walking around it. It, it doesn't seem like you should be here. No, it doesn't、yeah. seem like you should be here. But, dude, look, look. Well, I'm gonna spin around so everybody can see. This building behind us, there's like fresh laundry hanging there. Yeah. So, people are living in this. I don't. There, and, and, and let me put this in perspective. There's no convenience store here. I don't even. Not that seen we've seen. Yeah, how, where are they getting food and stuff? I don't know. Oh, wow. You've got to spin around for this building because next to the inhabited building is this building. Oh,、and、my goodness. That has got to be dead.、It、yeah, that's definitely dead. It reminds me of that.、Um, We, we saw a mudslide place once. Yeah, in Hokkaido. And yeah, all of the windows and are like the, the doors are just taken off this building. So that's right next to where people are living. It doesn't make any sense. 
And you wouldn't have to come on a tour to come here. You could just come on a boat and get off the boat and walk over here and walk around if you wanted yeah. to. So if you're into like abandoned stuff, this might be a place to come yes. check out. It's really kind of spooky to be completely honest. Indeed. Just when we thought there was absolutely nothing here, this is a city hall and this is a post office. And it seems to be that they still operate, like they're still functional. So there's definitely a population of people here. I am dying to know what the industry would possibly be because there were only like six people on our tour and that's not pushing the numbers. This is a toilet map and there's only one 24 hour toilet. <laughs> All the other ones close at like 6.30 or 7 o'clock, so... I'm impressed that they stop like toilets. Best be close to number three if you <laughs> stay in the night. <laughs> so I, uh, I googled the, the population. <laughs> 147 peoples live on this island. That's actually a high number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's more than it feels like. <laughs> I'm used to seeing like abandoned buildings and stuff now and then in Tokyo or in the suburbs of Tokyo and stuff, but it, to see an entire abandoned village or an island that's essentially completely abandoned is a bit spooky. And what I think hits a little bit deep is that I wonder if this is going to be representative of a lot of places in Japan in the future with the population like in a steep decline and the people who do live in Japan moving like just into the big cities. Yeah. So is this like just like a mirror into the future of most of Japan's countryside or smaller villages and stuff? It's pretty spooky to think that like at one point like it's going to be like a country that's going to have like these things speckled all over it. Yeah. That's yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I can't do it. I haven't practiced. I can't do it. <laughs> you got that one's attention. Oh. I don't have it today. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes your throat's just like perfect. Your, your Yagi Go isn't rolling. Yeah, Yagi Go is not good. <laughs> Something that's cool that they explained to us on the tour is the namesake of the island, which is Ikeshima. And the Ike part means pond, and the Shima part means island. And the they kept saying like, well, it's called Ikeshima, but it doesn't have a pond anymore. And the reason is because this is what now the harbor is where the boat came to drop us off and goes out to the sea that way used to be a pond but they dug out a part of it so they could turn it into a harbor so that i guess back in the day they would be able to load the boats up with coal and move them off the island so it's 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 got a, it's got a, it's got a pond lake a, po a pond island thing going on but uh there's no ponds so maybe they should rename this to be like you know harbor <laughs> harbor island or something I don't know if they have this in other parts of the world, and I've terribly done this in the past. I'm going to try my best not to mess it up. But Coca Cola, uh, for Christmas, they have a thing where you can make a ribbon with your uh, label. So I'm going to try to do it. I have not done a good job at this in the past. So you pull this part off. Okay. Then you go to the inside here and then you can pull this cord. Dun, da, da, dun, da, dun, da, dun, da, da, dun. And you have a ribbon. For your coca-cola and you don't have to hold it or anything it's just like that <laughs> <laughs> i had to have a friend at work help me with this and i'd already ripped the ribbon out and i should, but I'm just like well it's not gonna work i tried my best this is the first time i've had it work it doesn't look as amazing as i thought it was going to look but it's still pretty impressive that you just pull this little cord and plunk. 
It's been a really long time since we've talked about just a random Japanese snack. So I figured I'd talk about a random Japanese snack. What I've got here is a nice long cheese and bacon mayonnaise. And that's what it's called, the cheese and bacon mayonnaise. <laughs> we got this at Family Mart. Um, and it's just one of these things that's like 100 yen. And it's probably not good. And I got it just because that's I want it. That's only 100 yen. Yeah, it's 108 yen with tax. And I got it because I didn't want to get grumpy. And there's nothing else to eat where we are because we're way out in the countryside. So um, we've got this guy and it's kind of like a soft and usually like a Swedish bread. And uh, you probably- Sweetish or Swedish? Sweet, sweet-ish, not Swedish, not like the Swedish chef. And it is, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's mayonnaise for sure. Does it, it, does it, can you check all the boxes of the title of mm -hmm. the item? Yeah, it's cheesy a little bit, mayonnaise, it's got like these strips of ham, they call it bacon, but it's really just like a piece of, it's just like a piece of ham. I always think it's like pancetta. I don't know what that is. Special ham. Special ham. Um, it is going to make it so I'm not grumpy from hunger, but... I might be grumpy just from having eaten this, like by the time I'm finished with it. <laughs> we have come to the somewhat sizable town of Sasebo, and that is another one of the cities in Nagasaki Prefecture that is like, mm, there's quite a bit going on here as we drove through it. But uh, the reason that we came here is because we found out what their special food is. And every town in Japan is special for like, a special kind of ramen or a special kind of like, you know, yakisoba or a special kind of uh, sushi dish or something like that. <laughs> Sasebo is special food, special food is burgers. So we were like, well, we have to go. <laughs> and it is special to the point where there are a whole bunch of burger shops that have been here for like 30 or 40 years. And they have created a burger association that has its own yurakera and it's a dude with a big burger head and a hat. <laughs> and we have come to a place called Hikari, and it is apparently one of the places that's like popular with the locals. And I was surprised when we got here because it's actually sitting next to another burger place. And as you go through town, there's all these burger places and it's just, I don't, we're in Japan, like what's, <laughs> what's going on? Why are there burgers everywhere? So we came here and we got a couple burgers and I ordered just the special burger because that's, you know, it's special. And I figured I'd get down on that. And the thing that's interesting about this burger is we have a question about what is going on inside. So you've got lettuce and you got mayonnaise and you've got uh, some vegetables and some bacon. And then there's this guy in this white block here. And we thought it was butter, but I think it's like some sort of just like little square of cheese now that I'm touching it. Cause it's kind of like not falling apart. And then egg and then a patty, I guess is somewhere in there that we can't see. Yep, there it is. Really small little like McDonald's style patty. So the burgers are fairly cheap. This one is the most expensive. It was 640 yen. So that's like six bucks or something like that. But some of them are down to like 480 yen, like things like that. And uh, anyway, so we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and jump in. And as usual, it comes in like a wrapping so that when you hold the burger, the guts don't like all just fall out. They stay inside of this little like package. and. Technically, I think you're not supposed to be touching it with your hands, but I'm not a Japanese burger expert, even though I've had like a million of them in Japan. <laughs> All right. Mmm. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Actually, it's really good. Um, it doesn't taste like a gourmet burger. Like that's been kind of popular in Tokyo and stuff recently where you can get these like really, really good, like high quality meats and stuff in your burgers. This tastes more like, it kind of tastes like a White Castle or something like that. But the cheese, which is what that block was, is popping. And that's what's pulling everything together. Um, the mayonnaise isn't like, eh, it's just mayonnaise, you know, but everything else is working off that cheese. The patty is, I called that pretty good. It's like a McDonald's patty. It's not like anything mega to write home with. And I mean, egg on a burger is always amazing. So that helps out a lot too. Um, I noticed that a lot of the places when we were looking at our magazine at the different burgers places to choose from, were bragging about the bread. 
and a lot of places made their own bread. It's a bit sweet, but it sort of works with the rest of the flavors of the burger. I would say that it is a little bit dirty, but in a good way. One thing of note about the burgers before I get into this little ball is that it's, uh, we read that the flavors here haven't changed in the last 50 years. So what I'm eating is the same thing that somebody ate 50 years ago, which is pretty cool. Um, you think about McDonald's in that same way. Like I feel like I'm having the same burger my dad had long ago. But these little circles, these little balls, are filled with cheese, and they're called chizu. Was it was it chizu yeah, ponde? Uh -huh. And uh, ponde is something that we didn't think about, but there are some special donuts that you can get at Mr. Donut called ponde, and they're just a ring of little balls. So I guess ponde means some sort of ball thing. I hope to find more pondes in my life. Oh no! All right. I'm going to move on. <laughs> I don't know what kind of cheese that is. I know that it's cheese in texture and it's a little bit salty, but in flavor it's just kind of, there's a thing inside of there. <laughs> it's not any special sort of cheese. It's nothing, it's not bringing the burger together, that's for sure. <laughs> The evening has taken us to a town called Hiraro, and we don't really know anything about it. It was the only place that I could find a decently priced hotel or Airbnb that was on the northernmost part of Nagasaki-ken. Yes, I did all that correctly. Um, and I didn't really care too much about the particulars of it, but what we've come into feels a bit like somebody's um, garage and instead of like having power tools and things like that it's a barrage of sakes and condiments so these are the wrenches and over here some sort of hammers and stuff like that that is very good the the condiments will help you in the wrenching of the food and the sake will hammer it up and uh, it's a shared bath type situation you get what looks like a pretty nice shower. I'm, I'm excited about that shower. You could do some laundry if you wanted to. Then you go upstairs. Upstairs is where it starts to feel a little hodgepodge is what I'm gonna use as the word for this situation. You're gonna go up the stairs over there to come down the stairs over here. There's some more stairs here to go up over there, but you could also, if you wanted to go down over here, you could go down over there, but you'll have to go up. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Why are there so many levels in this place? It makes no sense. Um, I don't know how to explain this, but this feels a lot like my dad's old house. The, the thing was just built in two separate times, like one house had an addition added on to it, and there were different woods and things and different air cons, and I don't know how to explain, but this feels very familiar to me. We're in room number one. This is four different panels of wood. One, two, three, four. What happened here? <laughs> Why? Now, if you didn't have enough stairs out in the hallway and you needed some private stair action, you can come down here. And that stair is loose. It's a dangerous stair. Dangerous stair. But that's our Airbnb. Honestly, I'm starting to feel like Airbnbs are just, that's weird. <laughs> Airbnbs are just becoming these things that are weird in their own little ways. And I get that it's quirky, but it almost feels like every Airbnb, it's got the quirk. Are they supposed to? They're supposed to. Yeah, Airbnbs. All right, it's bedtime. No, it's not bedtime? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I guess you won't be standing and sleeping. 
What are you talking? You think I'm a giraffe or something? Yeah. You think I stand and sleep? I mean, That's... I'm big, but come on now. I know you do that. <laughs> Actually, it's perfect. Just get me like wrenched in there. <laughs> yep. You do you need the hammer from downstairs? That probably help. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I said that this Airbnb and maybe other Airbnbs, like we don't really need to shoot a video, but there's a toilet you need to meet. Come. First off, it, it, it's like a brown toilet. It's like unexcited Pikachu color like that's that's the color of this toilet um the toilet itself is like the, the bowl situation is normal there's no backing to this so you really can't enjoy yourself like you really can't relax so i don't really like that um i don't know what this dial would actually do i don't want to find out that dial is a mystery dial what's the light like anger <laughs> <laughs> i don't know and the rest is pretty normal. But what I find irregular is there's a freaking foot pedal down here. What? And if you look inside of the bowl, there's no liquid there. It's almost like a airplane toilet. And then you have to pump the toilet. Am I really doing this? That is the weirdest toilet that I have encountered in a while. To me, it seems like it's one of those that would be like in the woods or something. You know what I mean? Like a compost toilet or something like that, maybe? Like something where you don't have electricity, you don't have running water or something, but we yeah. have electricity, we have running water, and we're on the second floor. So this isn't just going into like a, like a, like a septic tank or something like directly below us. Mm -hmm. You know, unless somebody below us is collecting the funk, but <laughs> okay, well, that's not going on, but it's an Airbnb, so it's a wild card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a wild card. Oh, I hit my head. Everything is it's it's not even sized Dude, for me. I can touch the back. I almost touched the, my back. The, the it's so tall. I feel really tall in this house. Maybe <laughs> some poles in between us though. That's good. It's Festivus. Oh yeah. <laughs> Happy Festivus, y'all. Here's our pole. Here's our first Festivus pole of the year. Lovely. <laughs> Or should it one. not be lovely? I yeah, yeah, it's just a pole. <laughs> Fine tinsel distracting. <laughs> <laughs> and we have come to the little town of Hirado, and it's actually on the not part of Kyushu, part of Nagasaki. It is its own island of Hirado Island. And last night when we were coming here, we drove across this big, magnificent bridge yeah. that was like kind of like, whoa, we came across at nighttime. So it was like, really uh, kind of like, wow. I wrote fake Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, that's a pretty on good. My, on my guide. That's a pretty good sum up. <laughs> and uh, this town is famous for a similar thing that a lot of places in Nagasaki are famous for. And that is that it was a trading port for like Dutch and apparently a lot of Chinese trade and stuff happened through here at different points. And this yeah, was during Dutch. time periods where other parts of Japan weren't open to trade. So there's like a special like outsider influence on the culture here. And there's little statues all over this little town, which is actually a cute little town that looks like it could be touristy sometimes, but maybe not today. And the statues are like of Westerners or people from China. And I saw one guy that was labeled that he was a Jesuit. And so there is like things like that going on. And I've noticed a couple of churches and stuff. So it's got a bit, a little bit of a different twist than what you see in normal little towns like this. A uh, smell of vision a little while back was uh, charcoal. It you smelled charcoal? like there was a barbecue about to happen, <laughs> but just the charcoal part. And listen vision is really like jazzy right now. <laughs> Listen. Mm -hmm. I guess it is smell vision so I guess it would be listen vision I was like, what are you doing? You don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> you're mixing words. <laughs> Eric says I look great. Um, 
We've come up to one of the highest points, I guess, in Hirado, and there is just a walking street, which has kind of like a lot of old... When I look at this, I just think shogunate. <laughs> like, like that's, that's, that's the adjective that I use for this architecture, and I know that's not correct. Um, so just deal with that. But there's this lovely old Japanese architecture. And in the back, there's also a church. So you have a intermixing of things that normally don't intermix. And the book said that this is one of the most picturesque areas in all of Kyushu. And I kind of feel like they're right. It definitely takes you back to an older time. We, we walked up a couple of stairs. I'm pretty sure Hirado that we knew 10 minutes ago doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> It's just this now. Was I saying Hirato? I, when I listened, I thought it sounded fine. Or I would have been like, hey, <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know you would have called me on it. But I, what is it? Is it you said Hirado. It's Do. Do. Yeah. I think I said To. Damn it. Dang it. <gasps> Jealous. Oh, I didn't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go back further. They always have these, but you never get to like push the button or pull the cord or whatever. What made this one different? There's no one around. <laughs> and we're quite above a lot of people, so I feel like that sound isn't going down into people's houses and yeah. stuff, so it's okay. Okay, you can see the water coming down. These chains are really common in front of Japanese temples and shrines and stuff. And they are part of the drainage system for the water that comes down off the roof. So there's gutters and stuff that run to these chains here. And then the water will drip down the chains and then down into maybe another drainage system, which is what they have here. Or sometimes they have these gigantic pots that fill with water and then slowly overflow. But this system is like really, really common. I'm not sure if there's anything like to it beyond just being functional. I don't know if there's some sort of like deeper connection to something from it, but uh, it's kind of neat right now because the rain has just barely started. It's trickling a little bit and you can see just a little tiny trickle of water running down the chain right now. Quick side note, the view from this temple, <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> So we've been going to a bunch of places that don't seem to have a convenience store, things like that. Like we were on an island earlier and they, there was nothing really there. And here I looked for a convenience store last night for a sweet treat, couldn't find one. Post offices are everywhere. But if you can't find a convenience store, we've also been wondering about like grocery stores and things like that. We're, in the complex that we're standing, Google Maps, there's a grocery store right in the middle of it. What? So, we're going to see if there's really a grocery store here. That seems very bizarre. We were working our way up this hill to go to this church that happens to be at the very top of it. And the rain at this point has just sort of gotten to the point where it's getting like... It's not like pouring or anything, but you know, you, know, you never know, it might start pouring. So I'm getting a little bit worried. And uh, we don't have any rain gear on. <laughs> Like you got, is this thing waterproof that you're wearing? Yeah, it's quite resistant. Oh, so you're all set. Yeah, but I'm I also just gotta... standing like, <laughs> under the gate. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think we're gonna head back down. I feel like I'm a bit cheated a little bit about Hirado. I, I don't know, I kind of want to see more of it. But yeah, it's, ra we'll, we'll it's, it's raining. We'll be back through. Maybe it won't be raining then. Oh uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe you didn't get cheated. There's a flea market down the street. There is a flea market down the street. <laughs> that's what's going down in Hirado today. <laughs> so if you're driving on the road and you see a convenience store you've never seen before, you're going to stop because it's not something that comes across so often when you've been in Japan since like 2011 or whatever, since we moved here. So this has occurred. And uh, we went into the Rick Mato and it's kind of like barren in there like there's a lot of like shelves without things on them and that's not so common at convenience stores in japan and of note they have like a section where there's just food that's out on this table which is also sort of not really normal and they've got a bunch of onigiri in things and they're kind of big they remind me of um, onigiri from okinawa that are like these larger things with different types of fillings inside and this looks like it was made like there Maybe not, maybe somebody else made it, but it seems like 
it, it doesn't seem like it was like a factory someplace and they shipped them all in. Made locally. Yeah, it seems like it was made locally. So that's kind of like, oh, that's that's something that I'm I'm interested in trying. So I figured I would get this. Uh, it says it is like a Japanese style chicken sandwich. Is actually, it says sando on it, um, onigiri, for breakfast. And yeah, I mean, it, it just has this vibe that like, you know, your mom or your grandma made it or something like that, which is something you can't find in a 7-Eleven or in a family mart or something. So, uh, I think it's kind of funny because, did, it, did, it, did I misread that? It actually, no, it says Japanese style. So, what's surprising about that is, I guess this is egg. I don't know, is, is an egg on fried chicken Japanese style? <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I think. I'm thinking like it's going to have like a teriyaki base or a soy base or something. Um, this thing is kind of difficult to keep together. Uh, of note, it's also still kind of warm, even though I don't think it was sitting on something that was like a warm plate. And it, She heated it up. Oh, she did. She put it in the microwave. Oh, that was very nice. See, that's something your grandma would do. Uh, and then it's got um, chicken that looks like it's a little bit fried. So I think it's just like a fried egg, onigiri, chicken sandwich fried. it's fried. all it's all, i'm eating it out of my lap fried mmm <laughs> mmm it just tastes wholesome like in a way like kind of junk foody wholesome um yeah i mean i don't think if there's any sauce in there i can't really taste it it's mostly just a fried chicken has got a good flavor to it the egg has got a good like you know it's egg it's good and it's got some Japanese rice. It's very simple. Um, I'm gonna take one more bite to see if there is anything else a little bit deeper. Okay, on the back side, there's like a brown sauce. And it's some sort of salty soy-ish sauce. Um, I don't know if it's exactly soy sauce, but it has got a definitely a salty bite to it a little bit. So I guess that's where they're getting the Japanese style, but I'm happy. <laughs> what's, what's, what's going on over there? I don't really want to talk about it. No, no. <laughs> what's going on over there? Like, there's a thing. All right, well, I can't tell if the seat has a heater or not, but my <laughs> ass is incredibly hot. <laughs> And I can't figure it out. <laughs> so we've been changing all the settings on the air con, trying to figure out what's going on with my butt. And it is cooling down now that we've taken the feet heat off. You don't think so, it's just like some sort of placebo effect? I didn't take any sort of ass heat pills. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out if, if the seat's heating up your hot ass, if your hot ass is heating up the seat. I'm figuring it out right now. The seat isn't complaining though. It's just you. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's just me complaining of this overheated butt area. <laughs> Good God, it is cooling down by the way. <laughs> All right, so uh, Katie's in the restroom right now, so I'll let you in on what's going on here. <laughs> she doesn't know this, but the seat in her uh, in this car for her is heated. Mine isn't heated, but the, the the button for it is down here, and she can't see it from where she's sitting because of the armrest. So I've been reaching down here and flicking this thing on and off. And she is like, she knows the seats are heated or she thinks they are, but like she isn't quite sure what's going on. She's like fiddling with other settings and stuff and looking around. She's like, the seats are heated. And uh, if you're not aware, in the past, we've ridden on trains and stuff where the seats get really hot and she really doesn't like this. Like she's always like, my stupid, stupid seats are too hot. And uh, this has been a fun little game for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing that and see how long it takes for her to figure it out. <laughs> no. You thought it was funny when I saw this and I said sliding into home base, but I think you need to take a look at the business end of this guy. This guy? Yeah. What's going on? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs>
we came across another really cool looking bridge. This time it was big and blue and didn't really look like the Golden Gate Bridge at all in construction or anything, but it was still a fun drive across. No, I'm this looking little... at it right now. It's oh, shoot. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah. You can see it. <laughs> and, um... Behind us is a gigantic Buddha that we did not expect to see <laughs> we, at all. Yeah, and he's like, he's just chilling here. And it's kind of like the Buddha in Kamakura, which is like always super crowded, but we're the only ones here. Yeah, there's I mean, no one here. It might which is be kind because of nice. the weather, might be because of where it's located. Yeah, the... <laughs> today we're working our way to the northernmost point of this little Nagasaki island. Ken. Oh, okay. The entire Ken. And when we well, crossed over that bridge, we crossed over into a different island. So we're not on the same island we were on before. And I can't say that's of mainland. It's of connectable mainland because this is an drivable. island. Um, yeah, drivable without using a boat because we would probably go the wrong port. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a history now. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we were just out in the cold. We were just, it's rainy and like it was it was cold out there. Like it's getting windy. We're all like, "How's your ass?" I'm like I was just, we're gonna need a thermometer. No, we definitely need a thermometer. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> um, I think we're gonna skip the thermometer. And uh, yeah, it's gonna get toasty again. That's but for it, sure. But it, it cool, I have no it's choice. Cool, it's cold down. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if the sun is touching your ass and then you remove the sun, well, I'm saying it like immediately if, if, cools if your down. theory is that your ass is generating the heat, then my theory was... is not that my ass is generating oh, really? the heat. That's, That's my theory. Your theory. Oh. Oh. What's this video about? Well, I was going to talk about where we are. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why are you asking? What? What? what I just was that? I didn't know what it was about. Well, I mean, maybe we should get an update on your butt. <laughs> uh, not as warm as earlier. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'd say on a level of like one to lava. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we have reached lava at some points in time. Um, right now it's probably like a stew oh, okay. like, like like a stew that's been in the bowl on the on the it's got a little skin uh on the table you know like mom called you for dinner like 20 minutes ago and you didn't take your took your time getting downstairs well where <laughs> where are we now stew <laughs> no not your butt like physically where are we parked what has happened you brought me oh we're you, at the you, northernmost point and we just followed a sign that said lighthouse <laughs> so that's where we are right now. In an effort to cool down Katie's rear side, we are taking a little uh, hike here in the in the rain in the wind to get a peek off the edge of what we assume to be a overlook to the sea. Is that what we think we're going to get to? Yep, an overlook over the sea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This sign says, uh, be careful of high windy times because it is dangerous and it is a bit of a high windy time so we are being careful. But maybe not as careful as we should be because we're still climbing the lighthouse. <laughs> If I stand on this side of the lighthouse, then there's not as much wind, so it's not too bad. And there's also this door, which is like a mirror, which is not normal either. Uh, but I'm gonna go around the corner a little bit so you can see that there's actually a light in the lighthouse. And that's not something that you really often get a chance to check out. So let's have a peek. y'all. I'm gonna go back over here. <laughs> I think I need to clean the lens.
found something. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it what? does have a chair warmer. Well, that, that's a pretty nice feature for you. But it hasn't been on. Why is my ass so hot? <laughs> Maybe it has been on. Have you been turning <laughs> it on? Check this out, check this out. If I go down here and then I do this, then I do this, listen, 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 listen. I do this, I do this. <laughs> <Eric>! <laughs> How's your hot ass doing? <laughs> You're such a jerk. Are you serious? You've been doing this all day? And you saw me like checking out the panel. Why is this chair so goddamn hot? Oh, my butt is so hot. <laughs> Does he like hamsters? You know, if you just laid here, if you just laid here, it would work. Yes, lay. No, you are got to walk too far away. <laughs> the look on his face was crazy. Come here. I'm fucking... I will, I will sit down too. We have some new t-shirts on sale right now. Links below to our t-shirt shop. Make sure to like and comment if you like, or have a comment. More from Japan is on the way soon.